country. And today, Shotzi and I, oh, there she is. Shotzi and I are going on a field trip adventure. So, as you guys know, I mean, I'm still pretty new to the Northwest and I wanna experience all the things that the Northwest has to offer as much as I can. So I have two days off and I planned this ahead in advance. Um, I am going to go to a little town. It's in Washington, but I think I go into Oregon and then come back into Washington, I believe is the route I have to take. But we're gonna let Google Pants take me right directly to the cannery. And beside the cannery, of course, are the fishing docks. And that's where the fishermen bring their um, the tuna or whatever fish they're catching. Um, and it is tuna season between June and October. So being that we're in August, they should be coming in pretty good. And so I'm gonna go buy whole tuna. I'm gonna have them fillet it so I don't have any of that mess and this first time. And I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna can fresh tuna. So everyone I've talked to has said how good it is and that I won't, won't be sorry. And so I'm super excited. I get to go on a little bit of an adventure and it's nice and cool today. So Shotzi can go along for the ride. And um, maybe, maybe I'll take her out of the car and let her walk too, but I'm gonna bring you along. I'm gonna show you some of the scenery that's up here as well as the experience down um, when I'm buying the fish. I'm hoping that this is a fun experience because, um, and a delicious experience for Linda's Pantry to put some fresh home canned tuna on the shelf, know that it was just right caught that day. Um, it's gonna be amazing. So, okay, who wants to go? Let's do it. So guys, we are on the road. Um, heading out of my little subdivision and uh, I have to stop and get gas and get some cash because I'm not sure if they take, you know, debit cards or not. And um, I've got my budget that I'm willing to spend for today. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yeah. So I've got my cooler. I use an Arctic cooler. It's much like an Yeti. Um, I've compared them side by side and they do just as well and they're less expensive. So I'll try to leave a link to the Arctic cooler that I have. It's phenomenal. I've actually had it freeze food. So, um, because it just stays super cold. It'll keep ice for a week and a half. So, that being said, we're gonna stop, get some gas, get some cash, and uh, I've got my Bluetooth and my phone is safe on the dash and we'll turn it around here and put some music to it and get you some scenery as soon as I'm at a spot where it's really pretty. Um, I think it's beautiful up here no matter what, but right here on the Columbia River, it's just gorgeous. So we're gonna cross over to the other side and um, get to uh, Oregon. And yes, I have a seatbelt on. So just in case you guys were wondering, I do wear a seatbelt. I just don't always have it on my shoulder. I know. So, all right, guys, let's look at the scenery on our way to uh, Chinook. I got to put that in the maps. See if Google Pants can get me there. Okay, guys. So we are going up over this bridge. And this goes up over the Columbia. It's a very long bridge. And we're coming up and beside on each side are uh, logging. So as you can see, tons of logging industry up here. But here's the bridge we are on going up, getting up over the Columbia River. And so all this is good stuff. So, yay! I've only been over this bridge. Um, three times I guess now this will be the third I'm sorry this is kind of a bumpy bridge I'll hold on to it but pretty cool there's the river there's the big Columbia it's huge huge and there it is on that side but sorry I don't know how good this footage is going to be, but there are big, big, oh, and it just said, welcome to Oregon. So I just crossed over and now I'm in Oregon. But then I, I guess I'm coming back to the Washington side somehow. So any, anyway, going towards Astoria. Okay, we are 
we're coming down off the other side of the bridge. I just love it. All right, guys, I'll get some pretty scenery here soon, and I'll get it. fresh fish off the docks. I'm sure I'm sure there's a spot here too, but I was told that um, the other place is better. So we'll see. If nothing else, I'm getting an adventure and I love it. So um, yeah, anyway. And Chauncey's enjoying her nap. <laughs> she loves riding in the car. All right, guys, we're almost there. This was a little overwhelming because I drove all the way to where my coworker said to go and nobody had fresh tuna for sale. So I drove back to Astoria, which is also a port, <clears throat> only it's in Oregon. So I drove back to Astoria and drove around, got down on the, you know, by the port and started driving around and sure enough it says, and I got out of the car and thought, well, I'm going to walk down to the dock and see. And sure enough, it said fresh fish around the corner, itty bitty hole in the wall. I would not have been able to film, but they they have everything, um, fresh, frozen, live, not live. Anyway, um, I, I said, oh, I'm looking on the board. It was $12.99 a pound for tuna loins. So, um, but fresh was $3.25 a pound. So I got two, two tuna that came to 25 pounds. So, and half of that will be waste. Um, although I'm gonna see what I can actually get out of it for Shotzi. So I'm not wasting so much, but um, yeah, I. I, um, I got two, uh, two pretty good sized tuna. So now we're going to go home and carve that up. Ah, I've watched a couple videos, but that's it. So it still will save me. I should end up with 12 pint jars of tuna. And if I love it, I'm going back to get some more. So there you go. All right, guys. Mm. I guess I better find my way home here. <laughs> Okay guys, as you can see, I'm back home and here's, this is the bigger of the two and it's about 30 inches from tip to tail to tip to nose and it weighs about, I would say 15, maybe a little bit more. The other one's smaller, so I'm going to attack this first one and they are tough and there's a big old, you can feel this big spiny thing. So I've watched several videos. I've never done this before, but I'm going to bring you along for it and you guys may have to pray for me. <laughs> One way or another, we're going to skin this tuna, fillet out those nice loins, and we're going to salvage as much of it as possible. And if I can, um, maybe I'll cook some down for Shotzi. I might even, you know, do a test jar of some of the finer bones with the meat because as long as the bones dissolve, put a little vinegar in there maybe, um, as long as they dissolve, she might actually be able to have it. But I'm gonna get my my uh, knife skills on. I'm gonna bring you in close. I've got my knife sharpener, I've got my fillet knife, and I've got uh, my, my uh, chef knife here that I'm gonna need for some of the deeper cuts. And, um, and I need a stipper knife for some of this, so wish me luck. Come on in. Okay, so all the videos that I watched had you cut right behind this fin, and the guy at the dock said they, they have alligator hide. <laughs> and their hide is very, very tough. So you're going to go right down 
and right up to the point of where the the spine right because there's a lot of meat and i can feel how tough this skin is the skin is like um i don't even know how to describe it it's very tough so you want to you're going around that collar is what you're doing and then you want to go back here to the tail and cut around you're just kind of uh scoring around there so when you do actually get in there you're not doing too bad so i'm going to spin this cutting board around here so i can cut the other side of this collar and you're right up the center where you know the center of the gills here i don't know how good this video is going to be to i'm going to get this off of here so it's not in my way anymore It's a nice handle to start with, but there you go. All right, so I've got that. And now, um, now you're supposed to go, as far as I know, you're gonna go down. You can feel where the spine starts on the back of the head and follow it down. You also can go right here on either side. And you go all the way to where you feel bone. And apparently you want the belly side off first, but holy moly, oh yeah. Now I see there's bones there. So this, this piece that I feel here, there's a whole layer of bone there. So I'm gonna go again down the other side now. And I think, I think I got it. If not, we're gonna find out. <laughs> okay, so now we got that. And now we need to go here and the same along the back side. So, oh goodness, <laughs> I'm not a professional. So we've got, go all the way down to the tail. Uh, and then there's these little spiny, um, almost like little fins and then you got the underside fins so I'm gonna go on this side of that it's obvious there's bone there and just get in and I want to grab the skin I really I feel like I should be get peeling the skin back some of the videos I watched they did they, they did they peeled that skin off because I don't want it on and there's a lot of um, kind of fatty tissue down by the tail. Ooh, look it, we're gonna get it. This skin, maybe, I don't know. I might be butchering this, but maybe not. You know what, all these pieces are going in the canner regardless. Look at that. It is tough as shoe leather. Holy moly. But look at that beautiful albacore tuna. Okay, so I don't know if I'm butchering this or not, but <clears throat> I'm sure somebody out there will tell me that I did it right or wrong. It's my first time, don't judge me. Okay, and I need to get a bowl for all this, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this filet cut off this loin cut off and this is the belly portion um, and that's apparently that's what you want first so we're still going going in here all the way to there Ooh, okay there's some carnage in there and okay oh wow let's get this meat right off these bones. Look at that. Okay. And there's some long bones in there. And this is a pretty fatty piece here. Let's go ahead and I don't want to waste any of this meat. 
um, you've got about 50% waste and so I don't want any more. Look at it, I did it, my first chopped up loin. Now, this, any, any blood, um, this is a, a blood vein, you want to get that, that dark red out of there. That is not, you don't want to eat that. So we're going to cut that out. And it's more prevalent, I believe, in the top part. But we got, we got around it. You don't want to use that. Um, but there you go. Not too shabby for my first try. And yeah, so this right here is what I'm talking about. I could maybe salvage a little bit more meat off of this. I'm gonna try, cause I don't wanna waste anything. Like I said, um, we harvested this animal and <laughs> this fish and now it's time to make sure that we don't waste any. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'll keep going and I'll bring you back when I've got four loins and I'll let you know how it went because that was not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Although there's some real fatty meat right here I wanna get to, so. <laughs> and I can tell all the oil in this tuna, it's gonna be delicious. All right. <laughs> okay, here's fish two. Fish two is not near as big. And I got a bowl of fresh tuna meat. I got all the blood vein cut out of it. And it's not a perfect job, but it definitely is not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. It's just a little bit of a learning curve, so you just have to figure it out. And um, honestly, I'm, I'm enjoying the whole process. It makes me appreciate what I've got a whole lot more. So I'm gonna go back down this spiny, on each side of this backbone, spiny backbone till I get to um, bone. And then I'm gonna score around the tail, top and bottom. And yeah, it's no different than taking deer meat off a of deer hide, right? You just gotta figure out where all the parts live and who comes off easier. Or when you're cutting up a chicken. I don't like this thing sticking out there for me, so I'm cutting this fin off. I did get, manage to get one in the garbage before the garbage men came. So, okay, so now this has a spiny rib. I gotta go down on each side of that. And get the dinosaur skin off. Oh yeah. And you can feel where the bones are with your hand. It's perfect. And then you kind of kind of pull back a little bit. Get up under those bones and just run your hand down here. And look at that. Whoop! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh yeah. Now, now that blood vein, that's what's gotta come out. That has to come out. But look how pretty that came off there. Almost like a professional down at the dock. All right, I'm gonna finish this one and get it all cleaned up, clean up my mess, bleach my counters, and um, yeah, and then we're gonna end the video and show you what we're gonna be canning tomorrow because I'm not doing it tonight. I'm gonna need a good four hours for it, heat up and cool down and all that for the canner. Okay, but... guys, so I got it. I got a big bowl of tuna. <laughs> I'm okay, so this is the 12 cup bowl and it's full of fresh tuna ready to can up tomorrow. It's gonna to be another video. I'm gonna get this lid on here because this bowl is full to the top. Um, it wasn't as hard as I thought. Very messy though. Uh, I think next time I go, I, I you know, cause it was just not, um, not a familiar thing for me. So I think next time I go down there, there were some guys right there on the dock and I think I could probably pay them, you know, $5 a fish to go ahead and whack, whack, pull those flays off. And then I wouldn't have to deal with the fish. But today's garbage day, so they are going out, all the, the carcasses going out with the garbage and um, 
I'm gonna cut up this fish for in the morning. And guys, thanks for indulging me on this little bit of a field trip. I'm hoping that I get 12 pints out of this, but I may or may not. I may only get, um, you know, I may only get 10. But I'm gonna have 10 pints of tuna that I canned and filleted and experienced the great Northwest. So as always guys, I can't wait to see you next time because tomorrow or the next day, it's going to be a video on how to can tuna. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to finish cleaning up my mess and get this in the fridge. Hmm. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to check the links below. I think I have a link to my All-American canner that's rocking and ready to go for in the morning and my jars are all clean. We're going to be um, packing this raw pack. So, um, yeah, um, 